Welcome to Bible Believers Community Church where the name says it all. I'm Pastor Jeff Day and by golly we're happy to have everybody here. Daylight Savings Time and and um, only a couple of us blew it a little bit but not big so we're good. <laughs> we're good to go. Amen. And so um, this message that the Lord's given me to preach is going to be I think extremely controversial. I think that there's folks that are absolutely gonna hate this message. Doesn't matter, it's true. And it's true, and the name of it is the spirit of lies. We're talking about the spirit world and we're gonna talk about the spirit of lies. And the, there's no reason why this message should be controversial. But the reason it is, is because of the spirit of lies. The spirit of lies has convinced people of untruths to an extent that if you say anything against their belief, um, and in the universities, they're actually teaching it. The spirit of lies owns the universities. And the universities are teaching, I would never send my child to university at this point in time. I just wouldn't do it. They'll go in godly and come out heathen. And um, the spirit of lies owns the universities. And so now, because the spirit of lies wants everybody to believe lies, they're teaching relativism, where your truth is as good and as accurate as my truth. And our truths can be 180 degrees apart, but they'll teach that your truth is valid and his truth is valued or her truth is valued. Even though they're 180 apart, <laughs> they'll teach that they're both true. Well, that man, the fact that they can even convince people of that shows how powerful the spirit of lies is. And so turn in your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 20. And um, the other thing that we're going to do, because we're going to be talking about a lot of things that get flagged, if you will. So there's some words that I'm not going to say I'm going to draw on the board as we preach. So the board's going to be all confused. And if you try and look at it and make sense out of it, it probably won't. But if you just follow me as I do it, it will make sense as we go. Does that make sense? Yeah. What was yeah. the reference? The reference is uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 20. 1 Kings 22 and verse 20. And it starts off, it says, And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall in Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. So let's pause here. What's going on is God wants to show his judgment on King Ahab. King Ahab was an evil king. And God wants to show his judgment on it. And he pulled together the heavenly hosts. And he says, who's going to go and convince him to go to battle that he can fall, basically? Mm -hmm. And some of the folks said this way, and some of the folks said that way. Now we'll move on with verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I'll persuade him. Notice that confidence. I'll yep. persuade him. Yep. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We pray that, I know that this is a message that is exposing one of Satan's most powerful spirits. Mm -hmm. And so Lord, we pray for your protection. We pray for your protection on our recordings on our postings and all that stuff lord because we know the devil doesn't want this exposed and so lord you're more powerful than the devil and we pray for that we also pray that there'd be no disruptions we pray lord that you'd help us to focus and to pay attention and lord we pray your word says that there'll be a voice behind him saying this is the way walk ye in it we pray that the holy spirit will show everybody the truth of what's going to be preached today. And Lord, that you'd help me, give me the proper words to say and the clarity of mind to say it in a way that shows truth against lies that have been perpetuated over and over and over and over again, Lord. And we praise you, we give you the glory, we know that you are truth. So help us, Lord, to live in that truth. We praise you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, the message today is going to be uh, 
a significant one, and I'm not sure we'll get through it today. I, I really don't know because there's so many lies that are perpetuating our nation and, and the world and the times that we live in. Mm -hmm. And I can't expose all of them. There's just too many. But I'm going to talk about some of the main ones. And you may even feel yourself getting rubbed the wrong way because you believe something that's not true. And um, my only um, suggestion is that you pray that God will show you truth and that you be open to the truth that he'd show you. So last week we spent the entire time speaking about the spirit of darkness. These two spirits work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. These two spirits work hand in hand. And so we talked about the spirit of, of darkness and the spirit we're gonna talk about today is a spirit that has influenced every single human being that has ever lived. There's none of us that at some point hasn't believed a lie. And so that should, now, as I talk about the power of this spirit, I want to make something clear before I even start talking about the power of this spirit. He's nothing next to God. Amen. <laughs> he is not more powerful than God. The reason why he has this power is because we're so stupid. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. The reason he has his power is because we're so gullible. We'll swallow up anything that sounds good and we'll march to the beat of that drum regardless of what circumstance says, regardless of what history says. And history is getting real dangerous in the time that we live. They're rewriting history. Yes. Yeah. And they're changing it because history goes against the agenda. And so they're changing the history. And the universities are teaching false history lessons. Um, just recently, I... Uh, uh, watched a YouTube video. I, I said in Sunday school that the black community is starting to wake up to truth, and they are. Um, now, I'm sure if there's some black people who hear this message, they will ostracize me and hate me because not all of them have opened their eyes to truth, but there's a lot that are, they're having, the black community is having an awakening. And there's more and more that are speaking out about truth and condemning the lies that they've been taught in the past. They've been taught a lot of lies. Yeah. And they cling to those lies. And they're not worse than us. We cling to our lies, amen? Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to say they're worse than us because they aren't, but their eyes are being opened. And this one guy, he, and he, I'm not sure if he's a Christian or not because he certainly talked uh, about some of the vulgar comments that he got back since he, but he started doing his own research on history. And you know what he found out? It's not just black people that were slaves. Yeah. Before there were even black slaves, there were white slaves. The Arabs would come over to the colonies and capture white people that raid ships and capture white people and that sell, that either hold them for ransom or that sell them into slavery. And this guy's going, I had no clue that there were white slaves from America. Yep. And Thomas Jefferson was the president that launched the first war against a foreign entity outside of our land. And it was against the Barbary Coast and the Arabs that were performing piracy on American ships and taking Americans hostage and either trying to extort money out. And anyway, he taught this truth that was in history. <laughs> and man, a lot of the community came out and said, how dare you, you're weakening our cause. <laughs> because their cause is more important than truth, I guess. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So this spirit has influenced every single human being. And so just because I brought up the blacks, your mind may already be going, well, yeah, they sure believe a lot of lies. Well, guess what? You do too. You do too, so let's don't condemn them. Let's, let's, let's listen to the content of the message. One can argue that this spirit has the best track record of infiltr in, uh, infiltrating God's churches and his people, for sure. Mm -hmm. This spirit is throughout the land in churches today. There's preachers all over the world today preaching messages that line up with what the spirit of lies wants them to teach and not what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. And it's sad, but that's the time that we live in. 
I believe that this spirit of lies is one of Satan's favorite spirits. I think Satan loves this guy. He absolutely loves him because Satan's uh, program has advanced more from this guy's ability to infiltrate and to, um, to convince folks of untruths and Satan just loves a guy. It is his tool for all types of mayhem. Spiritual, political, geo, uh, um, historical, whatever. This spirit of lies can, with Satan's patience and Satan's, here's something that we see in this time period probably more than anybody else, I think, because of the times that we live in. Between the spirit of lies and Satan, and we've always talked about how Satan's been very patient. He's willing to wait hundreds, if not thousands of years to completely formulate something. But we're seeing something about his character that I think most generations haven't seen. And that is when he gets the feeling that things are going his way, he will overstep and he will blow it. And he will go further than what the people are willing to accept. We see that in the woke movement. He thought he had us. He thought um, that 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 we were just going to swallow anything now in the in the to the tune of political correctness, and yet mm -hmm. the people stood up and said, "Go woke, go broke. Yeah. We're not going to support that stuff." And mm -hmm. so, so it knocked things backwards a little bit. But we're going to talk about that. This spirit has and is extremely convincing which is how he is so effective in infiltration. And he's in one of uh, Satan's main tactics, is, he's one of Satan's main tactics for deception. So he's very convincing. I can say probably without reservation, there's something that you hold in your heart that you are absolutely convinced is truth, and it's not. I can almost guarantee it. And so, before we get too far into the spirit, I want to spend some time in our text evaluating what's taking place in the text that we just read. Uh, Ahab was a wicked king. Um, you're in 1 Kings 22. Turn back to 1 Kings 16. 1 Kings 16 and verse 28. It's going to tell you this is when King Ahab came on the, the scene. It says, so Omri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. And Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. This guy wasn't just an evil guy. This guy wasn't just wicked. He was more evil and more wicked than anybody that was before him. God did not care. You know, the idea that God loves everybody, God did not care for Ahab. He wanted to destroy Ahab, Ahab was evil. God wanted to exercise judgment on Ahab and he asked the hosts of heaven for any ideas. That's what our text was. I want to show my judgment on Ahab. What suggestions do you guys have that we can convince Ahab to go into battle because he'll get whooped in that battle? Now, God has this heavenly host he has a council of spiritual beings that he listens to. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are good spirits. Some of them are evil spirits. And so when he says, let us create man in our image, some folks say that's a text for the Trinity. I'm not sure I believe that. I think that these hosts that were created were also, they, they weren't, they look like God. And so when he said, let us, and he did the creation, they didn't have anything to, I don't want you to think I'm, muddying up the waters. They had nothing to do with creation, but he said, let us make man in our image. Could that be a reference to the Trinity? Absolutely. I think that, it, I think that most scripture has more than one meaning to it. But I think that, and, and just bear with me on this. 
When an angel appeared on earth, what did most people think they were? Men. Men. Mm -hmm. So those angels still have some of that image of God as well. We're created in the image of God, and the image of God means more than one thing. You know what the image of God means? It means hands, arms, noses, ears. That's the image of God. Yeah. But there's another side of the image of God as well, and that is sinless perfection. We're no longer in the image of God, folks. <laughs> nope. We're not sinless. No, but, not. but that's part of the image of God. God's all-knowing. That's part of the image of God. Do you know everything? I don't. And so um, these beings, just like us human beings, we are somewhat in the image of God, but we're not in the image. Now, Adam and Eve were in the absolute image of God, but they fell. Mm -hmm. And now we are in the image of Adam, which I don't know how to explain this other than it's somewhat the image of God still because we still have that appearance that kind of has a, the godly feature to it. Amen? Amen. So these hosts, when God's talking to the host, he says, let us create man in our image. They're going to have a head and an arms and legs. and Not all the heavenly hosts look like that. Mm -hmm. The seraphim don't look like that. The cherubim don't look like that. You know, the wheel within the wheel and four heads or, or four faces on their head. That's not the image of God. That's God's creation, but it's not the image of God. Amen. Amen. And so don't ask me why we went down that road, but we did. But God wanted to exercise judgment, so he calls together his heavenly counsel, if you will, and says, what are we going to do? And I think the good one said, well, we can do this and we can do that. And then an evil one stepped forward and says, oh, I'll go forward. I'll persuade him. Mm -hmm. The lying spirit knew he could persuade Ahab, Ahab and go forth to his own destruction. He, he's going to convince Ahab of a lie and that he's going to be so convinced of that lie that he's going to be willing to go to his own complete destruction because of that lie. That's a powerful spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to wonder what would be going through Ahab's mind when he believed all the prophets that prophesied that he'd prevail and he's going into battle and he sees he's not prevailing how long did he continue in that battle thinking that the tide's going to turn any minute the prophet said the lying spirit said <laughs> it's going to start turning at any point mm -hmm. and yet everything in front of him said you're going to lose this thing <laughs> mm -hmm. the facts didn't line up with the belief Fortunately, in Christianity, Christianity, if you truly study the facts, the facts line up perfectly with the belief. Yes. Mormonism, the facts don't line up with the belief. Catholicism, the facts don't line up with the belief. Jehovah's Witness, the facts don't line up with the, the belief. Muslims, the facts don't line up with the belief. The only thing where the facts line up with the belief and the historical facts, the current facts, everything that's going on in the world, the only thing where they line up 100% totally accurately with the belief is true Christianity. Not religion, not the Baptists, not the Methodists, not the, the Nazarenes, not the Presbyterians. I'm not talking about a sect. I'm talking about somebody that confesses that Jesus is God and believes that he rose again the third day. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. So this lying spirit knew. He, could, he just knew. He, it wasn't even a guess. He went up with all confidence and told the Lord, I'll go to him and I'll convince him. I'll persuade him. And God said, how are you going to do that, liar? <laughs> he said, well, I'll go be a lying spirit in all the mouths of, his, of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, you know what? That's going to work. You will prevail. Go do it. The Lord knew something about those prophets, didn't he? Yeah. Hmm. Now, he didn't just say, I'll go be a, a lying spirit in some of the prophets. He didn't say, I'll go be a lying spirit with the majority of his prophets. He didn't say, I'll, I'll have enough of the prophets that'll tip the scale. 
He said, I'm going to go be a lying spirit in all, all of his prophets. Yeah. If there's any preachers that are watching this sermon, you need to guard yourself with the help of God because this lying spirit will come and influence you and you'll teach lies. Yeah. The only thing that keeps me from teaching lies isn't my own superior knowledge. I don't have a superior knowledge. The only thing that keeps me from preaching falsehood is the protection of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and my reliance upon Him to give me truth. That's the only thing. So he's going to go be a lying spirit in all of his prophets. And you know, Christians have, Christian, most Christians don't ever read their Bible, but Christians that have read this passage over and over and over again, they don't even pick up on the fact that this lying spirit was successful with all of the prophets of God. Right. No. No. All of them. Christians don't seem to get that. It's as though they think that this was a one and done thing, that one time this lying spirit could influence what were considered the men of God. And once that was done, that could never happen again. Hmm. The world is filled with preachers, teachers, scholars, prophets, uh, self-professing apostles. There's no such thing as apostles in the day that we live in, but there's people that say, I'm an apostle of God. <laughs> Her being influenced by this same lying spirit that influenced the prophets of God back in 1 Kings chapter 22. They can provide pseudo facts that support their false teachings. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll teach you something that's false and they'll use the Bible to prove it. Now, I told you there's four ways that they do that and I don't know if you remember the four ways. Adding to it, taking away from it, taking it out of context, or completely changing it. That's the only four ways that they can use the Bible to teach you a false doctrine. They are masters of taking things out of context. They're masters of distorting history and making history say what they, not what it really did, but saying what it says. You know, there's, because history is recorded by man, other than the Bible, the Bible's the only 100% accurate history book in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All other history's tainted to some degree or another. Mm -hmm. Because to the victors goes the spoil. <laughs> and so when uh, World War II ended as an example, America wrote up the history of World War II from an American perspective. And they discounted England, they discounted France, they discounted anybody else because we were the heroes. <laughs> we're the ones that did it. Amen? Yeah. They certainly didn't, I believe, and I'm not, listen, don't, don't, when I say this, don't think I'm defending Nazis. I'm not. But I'll guarantee you that the portrayal of his the historical portrayal of Nazism isn't 100% accurate. Enough of it's accurate. They were evil. <laughs> they were murderers. They were they experimented with human lives in ways that's unfathomable and should have never ever been experimented in the way that they experimented. So I don't want to imply in any way, shape, or form that I support it or that I condone it or that I think that it, that part of it's been misrepresent, misrepresented. But I'm going to say this. I don't believe it was 100% accurate because after all, they were the enemy. Mm -hmm. And we're going to paint them with only an ugly paintbrush. Yeah. So, but history is still something that we have to rely upon. But we can't rely solely on history. Because yep. history changes. Our number one influencer should be the Word of God. Amen. And when history supports the Word of God, we know that that history is accurate. When history is not supported by the Word of God, we know that that history is inaccurate. And so, uh, they got pseudo-facts. They... Uh, our masters have taken things out of context. And when that fails, they simply change the word of God, which is another one of Satan's primary tools. Yeah. 
And then when, when Satan has changed the word of God and taken away the deity of Christ out of the word of God, he always sends a lying spirit to convince scholars and people that the manuscripts the new perversions used are superior manuscripts to, the, to that that were used to translate the King James. It's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. But the spirit of, of lies has convinced probably 80 to 90 percent of the Christians the other Bibles are great. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie. The trouble troubling truth is Christians swallow the lies hook, line, and sinker. They do. They just mm -hmm. Christians, if it sounds good, if my preacher's likable, if I love my preacher, it doesn't matter what he says, I'm gonna believe anything that comes out. Don't listen to I want you to love me. I love you. <laughs> But don't love me to the point where you blindly accept whatever I say. I never want you to do that. I do not ever want to be your final authority. When I say something that lines up with this book, I am 100% right. When I say something that, if I ever say something, I try not to. If I ever say something, and I don't think I do very often, there's been times that I have, and when I found out that I had, I come back and I correct it. But if I ever say something that's contrary to this book, I am 100% wrong. This book needs to be your final authority, not me. Yes. So, the lying spirit successful in those endeavors. And there was a true prophet of God named Micaiah in that same, you, you know what? This, this prophet Micaiah, he loved God and, and he, I believe, and I'm not trying to put myself like I'm as good as Micaiah, don't get me wrong, but I think like me, he would pray, God, leave me in all truth. Don't let me be deceived. Don't take me down a wrong path. And so this lying spirit was able to convince every single prophet with one exception, Micaiah. Micaiah, uh, when, when uh, before they went into battle, uh, there were two kings involved and one said, uh, the other king said to Ahab, is there yet another prophet that we can talk to? And Ahab said, ah, there's one, but I hate him. He says, you hate him? Why, why would you say that about a prophet of God? He goes, he never prophesies good to me, only evil. Micaiah. And the other king says, Let's fetch Micaiah and see what he has to say. So they go and they get Micaiah. And Micaiah comes and did, did the lying spirit, was he able to influence Micaiah? Yes, he was. Because they said, when the kings, when Ahab said, Micaiah, what shall we do? And Micaiah said, go to battle, you'll prosper. Now here's a kicker. The king knew better. He was buying into the lie but he knew better because as soon as Micaiah said that, the king's response was, how many times do I inquire of you and you tell me nothing but the truth and now you come and tell me to go and I'll prosper? And Micaiah says, I saw all Israel on the hillside <laughs> as a sheep, as the sheep scattered with no shepherd. Mm -hmm. And then he went on to prophesy and then he talked about this lying spirit coming into the mouth of all the prophets. Ahab was told the truth before he went into battle, but the spirit of lies is powerful. And he said, let's go. 500 against, and I don't know how many other prophets there were, I'm just giving this as an example. 50 to one. 50 say go, one says don't go. I'm gonna believe the 50, cause majority rules. <laughs> Majority almost never rules. No. no. Majority almost never rules. I want you to pay attention to the fact, folks, the majority, if back then they call them prophets, today we call them preachers. The majority were false. Amen. The majority yeah. taught lies. You know what you're not going to see in any of those false churches? You're not going to see the preacher getting up and talking about lying preachers because they're a lying preacher. Yes. 
It seems nobody learns from this passage of scripture from my perspective because I can't say that there's not a such thing as a valid mega church. I've never seen one. I've watched a lot of them on YouTube. They're all circus acts. They're not even a church. Yeah. It's all just entertainment. Some Christians have read this passage multiple times, but it never seems to sink in that this lying spirit is still alive and well and very active. Yes. This spirit, the lying spirit. Now, while there isn't a single human being other than the Lord Jesus Christ who hasn't told a lie, it's possible, or it's probable, it's beyond possible, it's probable uh, in the political arena where it's most visibly available for all of us to see. Mm -hmm. If we want to see this in action, we just have to turn our eyes to politics <laughs> yeah. and what's going on in the world today. The lying spirit is so good that he's convinced people that it's far more important to line up with your political lines than to line up with truth. Mm -hmm. It's far more important. And, and listen, I'm, when I'm talking politics, I'm talking more than Republic, Republicans and Democrats, although I am talking Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. But I'm also talking gay pride, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, um, politics, politics. Yeah. I remember in business, uh, I've talked to people that would say, I get into management, but I just hate the politics. Guess what? You can't work where there's not politics. <laughs> yeah. There's politics. There's always politics. So let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Here in America, the news media from all the major networks who seem to be far more interested in propagating an agenda than any form of actual reporting of facts, repeat over and over that if Donald Trump is elected, that will be the end of democracy. They say it over and over and over again. Um, they say that if he is elected, he will never step down. He will become a totalitarian ruler over America and he will never step down. That he will stand in the way of any form of democracy. I got some news for you. America is not a democracy. No. <laughs> Our founding fathers founded a republic, not a democracy. A, a, exactly. demo a democracy is the majority, the mob rule, the majority rules. If uh, 10 say yay and 11 say nay, we don't do it. What's a republic? A republic has a, a college electorate to where New York City can't dictate to Meridian, Idaho, there is a little teeny town called Meridian, Idaho. New York City can't control Meridian, Idaho just because they have more people in New York City. Yeah. So everybody's given a set of college electric votes where, and that's why a president can win the majority vote but still lose the election. That's a republic. Yeah. <laughs> it ensures a more level playing field for all citizens rather than just the large cities controlling the country. Yes. And praise God for that, because a lot of large cities are liberal as liberal can be. Mm -hmm. So praise God for that. We should never be acquiescence to let the republic go away and the college electorate go away unless you want to be, you want to turn every single state blue, get rid of the college electorate and let the majority of the people speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So... They perpetuate a lie that can easily be disproven. How can it be disproven? Glad you asked. President Trump lost an election and he stepped down. Yeah. He didn't say, nope, this isn't going this way. I'm going to maintain control and I'm going to stay in place. No, he stepped down and he signed all the documents that he needed to sign in order to turn the presidency 
even though there were multiple questions about how everything went down, and I'm being very careful with my words. <laughs> he stepped down. Yeah. So, if we want truth, which political party is truly getting in the way of democracy, if we want to talk about it that way? Mm -hmm. There's one party that's going after the main opponent of the other party with nonsense. Yeah. Trying to break him financially. I don't think you can break him financially. <laughs> They're trying to, but I don't think that's possible. Mm -mm. You say, I don't like that because I want Biden. Well, good, go vote for Biden. I'm not telling this isn't about who you should vote for. You should vote the Bible, not the party, anyhow. You should vote the Bible, right. not the party. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Who's interested in truth? from the political arena. Who's interested in truth? Here's where I'm not gonna talk so much, but I'm gonna write things. talking about before. There's all kinds of evidence to show what happened four years ago or three years ago isn't what really happened. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of evidence that shows that. There's a documentary you might want to pull up on your computer and watch. It's called 2,000 Mules mm -hmm. that shows people pulling up to election boxes and dropping off hundreds of ballots, one person dropping off hundreds of ballots. They, they actually identified 2,000 different individuals that were doing that across the country. Now, if we want truth, here's something I didn't understand because I guess I'm naive or whatever. If you want truth, if I'm a Democrat and I want truth, I say, well, let's do the forensics and find out. I'm not fearful of what the truth will say. But that's not how historically it went down. Mm. If you question that, you were some kind of communistic, anti-American, um, I'm trying to think of the word to say. I'm probably going to misspell this. That's what you are. If you say anything against how the media portrayed things went down. In our history, what president got probably the most public votes of any other uh, president in the recent history? Mm -hmm. Barack Obama. Oh. Mm -hmm. I remember a bumper sticker said, uh, it says something to the, innate, the, the, the um, uh, something to the effect of, I voted for Barack or for Obama, the first election to prove I'm not a racist. I vote against him the second one to prove I'm not an idiot. <laughs> but he got more votes historically than in recent past than any other president until Joe. Mm -hmm. Joe surpassed him by millions and millions. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. If we want truth, why is it when there were people that were saying, there's ways we can check this. Mm -hmm. We can do forensic on all the machines. We can go and, and validate signatures on mail-ins. Mm -hmm. 
You know, they, they've shown that there's some counties in our country that didn't do even one signature verification, not even one. <laughs> we could have gone back and done that. But you know what happened when people started, people with brains that said, I'm just not going to buy everything that NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox tells me? And people started saying, hey, we can go do the forensics on the machines. All of a sudden, they started dumping the data off those machines and cleansing them so that they couldn't do forensics on them. That should tell you something. Yeah. Listen, if we want to be guided by truth, then we can't be afraid of truth. And if the truth is something went, and, and listen, if you think that I'm saying that it absolutely went one way and didn't go the other way, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that the spirit of lies was involved and we don't know the truth. And we can't know the truth. It's too late to find out the truth. Mm -hmm. But you'd think after that documentary on 2,000 Mules was released, wouldn't you think there'd at least be some arrests some convictions didn't happen. People don't want the truth. No. People don't want the truth. They want to they want to perpetuate what's best for their party and their interests far more than going for the truth. And that's coming from your spirit of lies. Yeah. Here's another thing I'm not going to say. That thing is filled with lies. Yeah. Absolute lies. Filled with lies. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there's people in jail that have never had a, they've been in jail for three years. Never had a charge levied against them. Never been given access to a lawyer. Solitary confinement. Solitary confinement. Okay. Unclaimed conditions. Mm -hmm. Being punished. You know, somebody gets arrested for a crime. What's the precept in America? You're innocent until proven guilty. So if you're arrested for a crime, did you know it's against uh, federal law for you to, if somebody's arrested for a crime, for them to be punished until they're convicted. So they may not get bond, they may not be able to leave jail, but they gotta be treated decent while they're in jail because they're not convicted of anything. Mm -hmm. So their jail stay between being arrested and being convicted if they are convicted is more like a hotel stay. It's not quite a hotel stay because you can't come and go as you please, but you're treated decently because you're not supposed to be punished until you're convicted. And the penal system is a system of punishment. The idea that, oh, these, all these inmates have rights. No, they're supposed to be being punished for what they did, not just uh, uh, put into a system where they can work weights and watch TV and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Lisa and I lived in Arizona for seven years. When we lived there, Sheriff Joe was in, was the was a sheriff of Maricopa County. Yes. And he was sued over and over again for cruel and unusual punishment for his jail system. Because mm -hmm. out in that hot desert, he didn't give them air conditioning; he gave them tents. And when they sued him for for uh, cruel and inhumane punishment, his response and he'd win because he was smart. It say our troops are in Afghanistan fighting wars out of tents, and it's hotter there than it is here. If a tent over there is good enough for our soldiers defending our freedom, it's certainly good enough for inmates who are convicted of crimes. Yeah. They feed them sam bologna sandwiches. Mm -hmm. He didn't give them uh, meals like you hear some prisons giving folks, he gave them bologna sandwiches and water. And he instituted chain gangs where they would have to go clean up highways and whatnot mm -hmm. because he was punishing them for their crimes, which is what the penal system is supposed to do. 
He made their, you know, the old school black and white striped uh, prison garb. That's what those prisoners wore, except it wasn't black and white, it was black and pink. Mm. <laughs> and people say he was just cruel and inhumane. No, he, he was running a good prison, and when people got out of his prison, they never wanted to go back. Right. And so they, their lives straightened up. But eventually the liberals got a hold of him and he lost his, his uh, position. I, I don't know if he was ousted through election or if he saw that writing on the wall, wall and just retired. But it's nothing like it was then. I already talked about a lot. And most Americans today, if you ask them, what form of government does America have? I think probably... 90% of them would say, we have a democracy. <laughs> and we don't have we a don't. democracy, we have a republic. But that's nonsense. This one right here, when the Republicans released all the video of what took place, people were going through a museum. There wasn't people rioting and, and killing and threatening the lives of political people, it was, they were walking, if you've ever been to a museum, they were walking around and looking at things like they were walking through a museum. Right. And the police that were supposed to be keeping them out were actually escorting them in and showing them that stuff. The lies on this thing are so great, why is it that the head of the FBI could not testify to Congress whether there were any FBI agents out in that crowd or not. Because there were. There's evidence now that a lot of the people that are in prison over that thing, that haven't been given access, haven't been given the rights of an American citizen, they were arrested because they were told they had a deadly weapon. There's evidence right now that there was FBI agents who were handing out those things to people for free that they classified as deadly weapons and charged them with. Mm -hmm. It was a setup. Yep. Yep. I don't know if you've watched any of those videos. I've watched a lot of them. And you know what you see some of the... Um, i got to be careful what I say, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this is... There's videos where some of these folks, and it is spelled right for that thing. Um, there's videos where some of those folks during the whole thing were turning to each other saying, we've been set up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've ordered us to do things that will stir them up. We've been set up. These folks saying that. There was a president-elect, you'll know who he is, because it's right around that, right? <laughs> was given a speech and said, we need to do something about these folks. They killed, I believe he said, seven police officers during that thing. There wasn't one single person killed, not one. No, well, there was one, a protester. <laughs> Who was she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they weren't doing anything. They were trying to stop somebody from doing something they shouldn't be doing, and boom. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a single police person that died. Not a single one. The first one that they reported, uh, they had filmed of them three days later, mm -hmm. walking around the building. Lies. The spirit of lies. Yeah. The spirit of lies. What would be the motive for that? I just want you to think, I, I'll mm -hmm. tell you a motive, but I just want you to think about what what the, what the difference? And it's far beyond just one party staying in power and another party losing power. It's way, way bigger than that. Yeah, way bigger. Because you want to know what? I believe as citizens of this great country, we need to vote in order to try and 
but we're voting which is the lesser of two evils because both parties are marching us down the same path. Mm -hmm. yeah. And an independent party is not going to be any better. Mm -mm. And you say, uh, so why vote? Because you want to slow it down as much as you can slow it down. And some are marching faster than others are marching. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you want to slow it down. But I have a book that tells me that everything's going to go bad and it's all going to come up and materialize into a one world government. And this yep. country has to fall in order for that to take place. Mm -hmm. And so yep. they throw up fake things while they're doing other things. Just like the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. And so while they're doing something over here that gets everybody stirred up, they're doing something far worse over here that nobody's even seeing. Mm -hmm. All these stimulus checks, they're trying to break the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Because if the U.S. dollar breaks, our gas will go up to like $12 a gallon. Mm -hmm. If the U.S. dollar breaks, and they're doing everything they can to break it. The lines have been drawn so significantly over political lines mm -hmm. that you can show people these truths and they're absolute truths. You don't have to believe me. Go do research. See what's going on with the people. It's available yeah. to know. I'd rather not know because I need to support my party. How stupid. Yeah, you could end up there. <laughs> yeah, you, you could be the next one there. If your, if your party changes ways and you don't change with them, you could be the next one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. How is it that you can do something that didn't harm anybody and didn't break any law and be fined $355 million with over $100,000 a day of interest being added to it? Now, I know it sounds like I'm favoring one over the other, but I'm going to show you later on that I'm not. Because the other side's just as bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just as bad. If I said GWB, would you know what I'm talking about? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. You know who I'm talking about, GWB? George. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was president during this thing called mm -hmm. without going into detail on that, I have an explosive expert in this room. Is it possible for some a building to be compromised on one side and it fall evenly, perfectly down like a flattened pancake? Or does that sound more like a, dem, a controlled demolition? Was that a crime scene? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do they do with the crime scene? They cordon it off, keep anybody from messing with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they examine every speck of evidence to come up with truth. Mm -hmm. Why is it when this happened, within days, they're sending the metal over to China to be recycled? Mm -hmm. People say all, all the conspiracy theorists make up their own uh, story about what happened. You know what you could have done to stop all that? do some forensic evaluation of the crime scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're not interested in truth. Mm -hmm. What happened that went right along with that? Does, it, does anybody even know what this resulted in? I'm going to be an equally an equal offender today. I'm going to offend everybody. Mm -hmm. That 
was a law that was passed by the after first time in the history our government was given the legal right to spy on its citizenry without a warrant. Mm -hmm. And they do it all the time. Evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This wasn't real. The gave a narrative of what this was. Where's your inquisitive mind? What did you think when they said SEAL Team 6 got Osama Bin Laden and they killed him? Oh, and they dumped his body in the sea before anybody could see it because that's how Muslims like to be buried. This guy right here is so busy right now. There's so many lies going out. Unfortunately. I'm not sure that we can until the Lord comes back, I'm not sure that any of us will ever know all the truth. In America, people say it's a two-party system, right? It's this, and it's... You guys understand why I'm doing all this writing and not talking? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the two-party system, right? Right. right. Mm -hmm. But that's not accurate anymore. It was at one time, but it's not anymore. But there's still two parties, really. I, I believe there are. I, I could be wrong about that because the spirit of life can influence any of us. Mm -hmm. I still think there's two parties. This one mm -hmm. is... And this one is mm -hmm. yeah. this one wants one world government. They're trying to break this place down so that this can come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And they got literally billions and billions of dollars behind them. You say, how can the likes of Fannie Willis and Letitia James even get elected? Well, when George Soros gives you an unlimited budget to run a campaign, money speaks. Mm -hmm. And we've already proven that if the media repeats something over and over and over again, you'll believe it. Even, yep. even folks that are sitting here saying, I don't like the news, I know they're a bunch of liars. If you watch it over and over again, you're going to believe it. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't watch news. I might watch it once in a great while just to see what they're throwing out there. Mm -hmm. Gee, my wife, what, what, what do I turn on national news like maybe once every six months just mm -hmm. to see what they're throwing out there? If you want a healthy way to approach NBC, ABC, and I don't care which Alphabet Soup news network you listen to, Fox isn't any better. No. no. If you want to, if you want the closest thing to the truth, listen to what they're saying. Turn it 180, and that's probably the truth. Okay. Yeah. We live in an evil, 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 evil time. Yeah, we do. And an antichrist is going to show up. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse. Things are going to get worse and worse and worse. And then somebody's going to pop up that's going to have all the answers. Mm -hmm. We can fix this. We can fix that. We can fix this over here. This is a solution to this. this is, and people are going to go, oh my gosh, this guy's like God. Mm -hmm. And then at yeah. some point, this guy's going to step forward and say, say I am God. Yes. And the majority of the population is going to go, let's bow down and worship him. Mm -hmm. 
Have I offended anybody yet? If I'm not, I got to work harder at it. <laughs> no, no, you're good. No. What's another great big lie? Well, I'm not an artist. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell what I'm doing here because I'm not an artist. Oops. Know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. What a lie. And they said, if you say anything against this, you're a... And yet, hundreds of scientists came forward and said, this isn't true. It doesn't work the way they're saying. Mm -mm. This isn't even really, it's difficult doing it this way, but if I don't, it's just going to be thrown in the toilet and nobody's going to see it, right? Okay. They said, this isn't even a, I'm going to misspell this. I think that's right. Two C's. Two C's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. True scientist said this isn't even a. Mm -hmm. It's a. What's the term? DNA. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I I'm probably wrong on this because I haven't looked at this in a long time. I think that's what they said. No. No? It's something that um, it, uh, it addresses symptoms, not the real thing. Immune system. So this came, this came about and all of a sudden, young athletes all over the world, I mean young, falling over dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Falling over dead. This guy comes out and there's actually people said, oh, this has been going on all along. It's not true. Yep. It's not true. It's a lie. This absolutely, according to um, according to this modifies and not in a good way. Yeah. Hmm. Where's that leading us? I believe that I've actually seen tests of the technology on YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. I've seen videos where a guy's riding his bicycle and a CT, what do they call those cameras? CT something, CTC cameras? Is that what they're called? The ones that are all over towns? Huh? Anyway, there's, there's a camera set up and this guy riding his bike and all of a sudden there's an electronic interference and this guy on the bike falls over dead. There was a soccer game where simultaneously about 10 guys fell over dead. Simultaneously. You, you're going to try and tell me that things like that have been happening all the time? No. No. There was a, um, I think it was a movie theater in China where a group, that, it's like Girl Scouts, young girls that are in a club, they went to this and almost all of them fell over dead. The ones that didn't were performing CPR and the ones that did and none of them made it. And they come up with 
with some harebrained thing like the sky is falling. I mean, the excuses that they give are laughable. And what do people do? They open up their mouth real wide and say, give it to me because the alternative is too scary to think about. So I'll believe whatever you tell me because the truth is too scary. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm, I'm way past time. I better quit over it. Should we continue this next week, maybe? Is this yep. too much for you? Or? I have a lot more to talk. I have a lot more to talk about. So, um, Lord, help us to see truth. Lord, help us to search for truth, regardless of whether it's scary, whether it's not scary. The Bible says that we're in dark times, but we're not the children of darkness. And this world should not, the, the things of this world should not overtake us like it overtakes the children of darkness. Because we have light and we should be able to have the ability to see. And so Lord, we ask for your help. We pray for your guidance and for your direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.